Terrific Sam Sachs, his new book, Pig, P-I-G, which I believe is his seventh. Sam moves fast. He moves fast. You gotta, you gotta be listening and following quick because ideas come and they keep rolling. There, there, there are all kinds of experiments happening. You will be experimented on. Pig will be turned inside out. So you ready? Here he comes, Sam Sachs. Good afternoon. Okay, a couple people, hi. To everyone else, also hello. Um, honored to be here, thank you for the invitation, Joyce, to read um, at this festival. I just came from a demonstration in San Francisco to protest the genocide happening in Gaza. Um, and I've been struggling a lot as a Jewish person to think about how to speak to this moment. So mostly I'm gonna read out of this book, Pig, yup. Uh, but this poem is something I just wrote on the drive over, and it fails, you know, to get at the thing, but is also an attempt to speak. Um, I'll also say, since this is a festival, right, thinking about climate, yeah, and the natural world and humans' relationship to the natural world, the U.S. military is the number one polluter and consumer of fossil fuels on this planet. Um, so, like, militarism, occupation, um, is inextricable, yeah, from our relationship to nature, right? Um, okay, so this is the first one. If I'm Jewish anywhere, let it be here. In the engines churning gasoline back into living horses, in the resuscitation of death into speech, in the arm lifted behind the brick that shatters the policeman's speaking neck, Outside the federal building, there is chanting. Inside, there is no one, only people, rearranging numbers into the fabrics of mass death. Today, I spoke to my sister, and she says she's scared to bring her children to their Jewish day school. I understand, I say. But where does this fear lead us? Sister, let our suffering only be a bridge connecting all who suffer and never an electrified fence built around the human heart. Let us never be the rifle unless it is the rifle aimed at the men who dress in suits to keep children in cages. There is nothing unique about our grieving. It connects everything that breathes. The God of my father is not my father, yet I am responsible for him. Yet we pray in the same languages. If I am Jewish anywhere, let it be everywhere at once. My responsibility, everyone. There is a paywall around a grieving mother. There is a genocide right now happening in Gaza, being carried out in our names. What is done in our names becomes our names. There is no other way to say this. There is so much life left to be saved. Cool. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, hard fucking week. Sorry to cuss. Um, boo, boo, boo. Okay, so I made this poem about pigs. Oh, it's being recorded tight. Um, you know, I'm thinking about the pig in terms of ecology, in terms of kashru law, in terms of police and policing, men and masculinity, you know what I mean, queerness, so like the expansive umbrella of the pig. Um, has anyone been around a hog lagoon? 
Y'all know about so like when there's like factory farms of pigs, they like put the detritus and like the feces from the pig all in these like big lagoons that then destroy local ecologies. Um, so this is a poem that I don't think I've ever read aloud, but it's called Hog Lagoon. You can smell it soon as you enter the state. Caught from space, the pools look like wounds in the earth, cut precise and surgically pink. Hundreds of millions live and die inside the factory. Waste falls through the slats and slides into pits, stored in the open to be sprayed onto crops which are fed to the pig's children. Pink, vicious cycle. Some humans mistake the spray for rain. Some children open their mouths to catch faith on their tongues. The rain makes its way into homes, even with the windows closed, makes its way into rivers and lakes. What happens inside the factory can never stay inside the factory, no matter what the farm believes it pays, no matter how thick the walls we all eat shit. Sorry. Everything that happens on earth happens everywhere comes up in us as fungus we won't taste until we're dead. Thanks. Okay. Okay, this next one's only four lines long. Um, and I was trying to get at this fact that like most colonizing armies brought like a herd of pigs with them to feed their soldiers. And so after like the colonizing army left, the pigs remained. And so you have this like living shift in local ecologies based on on warfare, right? And histories of occupation. Um, so this is a poem that's just getting at that. It's uh, never, nearly every invading army brought pigs with them to feed their soldiers. They reproduce so quick, generations can be eaten during a single siege. Adaptable, they followed, devouring towns and forests. So soldiers ate the worlds they invaded. Even after illness swept through the men like wind through a grain silo, the pigs they left behind, killing the hillside, remain. Okay. Thanks, y'all. Bless you. Hi, sweetheart. Okay, this is, um, what's next to be read, you know? Um, Okay, this one, a lot of these are like really filthy poems, you know, and we're like at a day festival, so I'm like, what, what should I read? <laughs> this is not just about the erotic. Okay, this is an elegy for a buddy. Have y'all seen the poem, uh, the film Babe? The, you know, Babe? Anyone? Make some noise for <laughs> this classic. Um, okay, there's a moment though in the film where, where Babe, who was raised by this sheep, right? The sheep mother dies, and then Babe makes the noise of the sheep to mourn their sheep mother, right? Babe, non-binary icon. Um, okay, so this is a poem that says, Babe the sheep does the sheep noise when mourning its sheep mother. Okay. Grief is an animal. We all know that. But which animal exactly? What kingdom, what family? Is it ever a fish? Does its voice change as it leaves the body, or is there a bestiary somewhere in the chest, great bone arc that crates and creates each heaving lamentation, remakes the grieved thing as noise? At the televised funeral, the ingenue performs the gone singer's living songs and for a moment is overtaken, slow howl opening the painted cage of her mouth. When Sean died, I made sounds I haven't made since. It came into me as wind. It rode me as wind. Cool, thanks. That's a sonnet for Babe. Um, okay, another poem. This poem closes out the book. Um, and it's, the title it takes its title from Piglet. Any fans? A few, okay. One, okay, some noise for Piglet in the front row. Appreciate you. Um, so this closes out the book. It's called, um, It's a Little Anxious to Be a Very Small Animal Entirely Surrounded by Water. Quote Piglet. What will be left after the last fidget spinner's spun its last spin? 
After the billboards accrue their thick layer of grit, masking advertisements for teeth paste and tanqueray gin. After the highways are overtaken by invasive forests. After the rabbis leave their congregation for drink. After new men rise to lead us sheep toward our shearing, to make bed sheets from our hair. After the high towers have no airplanes to warn away and instead blink purely toward heaven like children with one red eye. After phone lines do nothing but cut the sky into sheet music and our phones are expensive bricks of metal and glass. After the cloud of photographs collapses and all memories retreat back into their privatized skulls. After the water taps gasp out their final blessing what then, when even local militias run out of ammunitions, when the blast radii have been chalked and missiles do all they were built to, when us Jews give up our state for that much older country of walking and then that even older religion of dirt, when all have succumbed to the illnesses inside the church of our gutted pharmacies, when the sea eats its cities, when the ground splits like a dress, when the trash continent in the mid-Atlantic at last opens its mouth to spit, what will be left after we've left? I dare not consider it. Instead, dance a moment late in this last extinction. Now that you are hearing this, this must be enough. I want to make sure I don't go under or over time. I try to be precise. OK, so yeah, maybe I'll do a, an itty bitty and then another one and then leave. <laughs> What's up? Y'all doing good? We here? Alive, awake, enthusiastic, embodied, present, humane. Um, OK, no, maybe I'll just set up this last poem because it'll take a minute. Um, is anyone familiar with this process of xenotransplantation? Y'all heard that? One or two? OK, one per, hell yeah. OK, so it's this like magic <laughs> that he, where at the, at the intersection of magic and science, right, where you place part of an animal organ into a human organ surgically to help the human body stay alive. Um, and a buddy of mine um, had uh, part of a pig's heart put in his aortic valve. Um, and I wrote this poem for him while he was going through the surgery. Um, and actually, um, it's going to close out maybe with an invitation to y'all. Um, yeah, when I go like this, could y'all do that on your chests as well in time? Can we try it right now? Is that loud enough? Can y'all hear each other? Can y'all hear that? OK, I can't, I'm far away from y'all. But OK, so we'll get there at the end. It's called xenotransplantation. My friend's got a pig heart in him. Or my friend's got part of a pig's heart, a piece. His heart's part pig. The aortic valve is the dog god guarding the tube blood runs through once it's been scrubbed clean. One of two semi-lunar valves which sounds like a part of a moon, a piece. My friend's got moons in him separating the two major atria. My friend is filled with ballrooms, those dark vaulted ceilings. My friend's a vegan. My friend's a vegan with a pig heart thumping club music. My friend believes the pig in him is vegan too, since it eats what he eats, speaks when he speaks. The pig heart pulses in his chest like the reflection of the moon in a puddle out behind the club once we've finished dancing. My friend takes drugs so his body doesn't reject the organ. My friend takes drugs so he can go on dancing. His pig, grown to be sewn into a man's ribs, unnaturally selected. No god could have predicted this in any garden still holy that bit of tissue that lets him live and live, thin miracle that set another 17 years going inside him. If you listen close with one ear to his chest, you can hear the pig heart singing, calling out to every listening animal, all I want is to live. 
and live. All right, thank y'all so much, appreciate you. I think that's my time. Yep, that's my time, okay, is that right? Or do I have two? I got a minute left? Oh dang, okay, here's another poem real quick. <laughs> this is an ode to Miss Piggy. I'm gonna do it real fast. Um, let's see if I can do it from memory. Uh, great porcine drag queen. Yep. You who grew erudite in the slaughterhouse shadow, eyelashes like black swords teased up to challenge heaven, eternal in your powdered foundation, refusing every day the knife's inevitable and unkosher ending, be snouted fount of youth, Seminal queer iconoclast, pearls to bed, pearls in the junkyard, pearls on television. Diva of late night, prime time talk shows, door kicker for the non-conventional romance. Shown us how to love across identities arbitrary as phylum and species bless that impossible coupling. How you took an entire frog inside you and remained the same bad pig who'd karate chop anyone dumb enough to disrespect. And can I get a hi-ya on three? One, two, three. Okay, but this time with feeling. One, two, three. Okay, this time, but like goofy. One, two, three. Hi-ya. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> What little queer wouldn't look upon you and be seen or saved or salved? You who never questioned your destined for stardom. Oh, miss, miss, oh, great swine, demimond, oh, dame pig, I'm yours till I end. You, my religion, how I understand all this now. We are ourselves and the hand inside that guides us. We who are given voice by the same spirit that gives voice to everyone we have ever loved. Cool. Thank y'all.